The next thing that we're going to talk about are called extrema. Uh, extrema references the high and low points of a graph. Um, many of our graphs are going to be characterized by having peaks and valleys, kind of uh, wavy looking lines. Maybe we have something that looks like this. Okay. Notice we have peaks and we have valleys. Okay. Um, now these types of graphs have what we call minimum and maximum values. Um, if you look around this graph, <clears throat> maximum value um, would imply the highest point on the graph. Well, right here, we have what we call an absolute maximum. Um, absolute because it is the highest point. Nowhere on this graph do we have a point that is higher than this one. So it's the absolute maximum. Um, but there are other points similar in nature and appearance to this. If we consider this point the absolute maximum or, or the maximum because it's at the top of a hill, or there's another point at the top of a hill. That'd be this point right here. Well, this point is a maximum, but we call it a local maximum. We call it a local maximum because um, locally, meaning of all the points that are very near it, you know, sometimes I even do this. Let's, you know, if I were to think about the zoom box feature on your calculator, if I were to zoom box right there and just blow that up so I erase everything else and I just look at that, you know, well, that point that I've marked is the maximum point of everything in that box. So of everything very near it, it's the maximum. We call it a local maximum. Not absolute because there are definitely points higher than this one, um, but locally it's the maximum. Now we also have a point down here in contrast at the bottom of a hill. This is called a minimum, or in this case, it's a local minimum. Uh, for the same reason, if I put a box around it, well then, locally, it's the lowest point. Now, this graph has no absolute minimum. At least the way that I drew it, because the graph continues to go down forever. It never stops going down. Therefore, it doesn't have a bottom point. It doesn't have an absolute minimum. Um, Real quick before we move on, um, local and absolute are not the only terms we hear. Um, sometimes we hear local described as relative, and sometimes we hear absolute described as global. Um, so synonyms in math language, okay? So you see them used interchangeably. Sometimes I use them interchangeably as well. Um, sometimes, absolute or global maximums and minimums are just called local. Because if I were to kind of box this thing in the same way I did over on the left, well, locally, that's a maximum. Sometimes we just call all maximums local and all minimums local. So just kind of be aware of that as well. In this next example, we're asked to find all local extrema. In other words, find all maximums and minimums. Um, there are mathematical techniques to do this, as you no doubt could imagine, and you will one day learn these. Um, it requires a bit of use of calculus, and so in some respects we're not quite ready for it, but it doesn't mean we won't ever be ready for it. We're just not ready for it today. Um, so we're going to use the built-in features of our graphing calculator to find the minimums and maximums. Um, so what I've done is gone ahead and typed it in here. I've hit graph, and I've played with the windows a little bit so we can see it uh, pretty well. Um, and my graph kind of looks then like this. Comes 
down here quite a ways. Comes back up. Doesn't go very high. Doesn't go very low here. And it goes back up there. So it kind of looks like this. So we have minimums and maximum points clearly. We have a minimum here. We have a maximum. And we have a minimum. Okay, what we want to know is what are those points? And the calculator can find those points for us. So let me show you how to do that. Um, we're going to go into the calculate menu like we've done previously. So second trace. And notice there are th two options here. Minimum, maximum. So you have to choose which one you're going after first. Let's say we go after that maximum point. And you can see the cursor flashing there. Let me move it off the top so you can definitely see it. Uh, notice on the bottom left of the calculator screen, it asks you for a left boundary. So it wants you to go to the left of that maximum. And when I do that, I hit enter. Now it asks for a right boundary. So now I'm going to go to the right of that maximum. Hit enter. It's going to ask me to guess, which I don't have to do. I'm going to hit enter again, and there's my maximum value. So writing the point down, I'm just going to round it. It's at the point... 0.46 comma 1.32 and I wrote that at the wrong spot okay so there's my maximum and I wrote it down here okay well now likewise we can find the minimum so let's do that second calculate I want minimum and it's going to ask me the same thing. Just go to the left side of the minimum. Go to the right side of the minimum. Guess what you don't have to do. And so it's a minimum at 1.60, comma, negative 1.77. Okay. Likewise, you can find this one down here the same way. It doesn't matter that it's absolute versus local. Um, since I messed it up, I'll let you do that on your own with your own calculator. Next thing we're going to talk about is symmetry. Symmetry can happen three different ways. Uh, we can have a graph that is symmetric about the x-axis. Looks like this. So the points up here match up with the points down here. Now this one is actually not a function. Um, because it's not a function, it doesn't pass a vertical line test, it's not of particular importance, I guess, or, or valuable to us right now. So we're really not going to concern ourselves um, with that particular case uh, at this point in time. We have graphs sometimes that are symmetric about the y-axis. So maybe it looks like this. Where if the point x, y is on the graph, the point negative x, y is also on the graph. Um, in other words, f of x is equal to f of negative x. In other words, the, the y value at x, that's what f of x is, is the y value at x, is the same as the y value at negative x. <coughs> this is kind of a, a test we can use. Um, we call these functions, when this happens, we call them even functions. Okay. The other type of symmetry that we sometimes see is symmetry about the origin. Symmetry about the origin would look kind of like this. 
twofold. Fold over the y, fold over the x. And double fold, these points here fall on top of this one. Uh, in other words, this point here could be considered x comma y, same as this point down here, negative x comma negative y. Um, this is true about these functions, that f of x is equal to negative f of negative x. Wait a minute, I wrote that wrong. Erase that. What I meant was f of negative x, same as negative f of x. So in other words, the y value down here at negative x is the same as the opposite of the y value up here at x. Okay, So that's our test. We call these functions odd functions.